Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Chocast. Today, I'll be joined by my friend Mike. What's up, y'all? How we doing? So, obviously, a lot has happened since my last pod, but we're going to run down what happened in the draft and detail the Hornets' free agency. So, Mike, we're going to start off right here. How would you describe the Hornets' overall draft? So, I know this isn't a normal thing that you would say as a Hornets fan, but I actually think the Hornets did a great job drafting this year. I know they received a lot of hate for the Brandon Miller pick at number two. I know a lot of people wanted Scoot Henderson. But I think what they're really looking at is that Brandon Miller can really impact the Hornets on day one, and he really fits well within the lineup. You know, if you would have gotten Scoot, you kind of would have had a problem down the road with Terry Rozier, you know, which you looked to trade him and whatnot. And so I don't really think the Hornets want to trade Terry, essentially. And so you can kind of look at LaMelo with Terry and Brandon Miller three. That's a good starting one through three. And, you know, if they can get Miles Bridges back, that's even a plus more. And not only Brandon Miller, but I also think they did a great job drafting. You know, Nick Smith Jr. was a great pick at 27. You know, could have gone a lot higher if injuries, you know, another. If that Arkansas team wasn't as talented as they were, and, you know, their second round picks, I think they did a great job drafting as well. Yeah, I would have to say the same. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people, like myself, were a little bit shocked by the decision to draft Brandon Miller. But I would say it's kind of grown on me. And I think it's grown on a lot of Hornets fans. I think a lot of concern was with Miller and like how like his personality was too. I think a lot of people saw Scoot and was like, oh, he's some energetic guy. He's going to really change the franchise. But you already see Brandon Miller, a lot of personality, and you see him already giving the Hornets high hopes, saying that they're going to be in the NBA championship this year, which is, you know, it's, it's a great thing to hear from your rookie, but also it's, you know, a little bit of a, it's a little too much, but I, I like it. So I think Brandon Miller was a good pick, and I think he'll grow on me, and it'll be fun to watch Summer League and see what happens from there. But do you think, looking back on it, that he was the right pick, or do you think Scoot should have been? I think he was the right pick. I know that you could argue, and you'd probably be correct if you argued that Scoot is better right now. Um, but I just think for the Hornets, you know, what they need – I think Brandon Miller was the correct pick, and I think that's why they decided to make the pick for Brandon. Yeah, I would say he I, – I think the thing that makes me happy about the Hornets picking Brandon Miller is they believed he was the best player. I would have been a little bit upset if they had drafted Miller because he was the best fit. But they think he's the best player and the best fit for the team. And I would have to agree, he is the better fit for the team. But I'm still hoping that he is the better player. And obviously Portland still has the whole thing to deal with. Scoot and Damian Lillard, you know how that's all going to go. But overall, I think Brandon Miller was a solid choice, and I'm not going to hate on it, and I don't think anybody should. I understand the booze initially, but I think everybody should be positive towards him now and give him a fair shot. That's how I look at it. But I'm going to ask you this, Mike. Which pick excites you the most outside of Brandon Miller? That's a great question. Um, I think I would have to say Nick Smith Jr. Because he's just a really good pick to get at 27. You know, he's a really solid player. Um, he was great in college. He really gave him a spot. And he's just, you know, he, you know, he's not really super, super fond of blue ball. But outside of that, I'd say he's really got the whole package. And I don't know. I just I like to say that he's going to put James Booknight out of a job. Because I think, you know, that's kind of rotation minutes he's looking at. I think he could really do that if he wanted to. I also like their two second round picks. I'd say out of the two, I'm more excited about um, Bailey. But I don't. I don't really know that either one of them will really have a you know, spot on the Hornets. I mean, if you're kind of looking at probably more G League, and the Hornets are already kind of packed at that two shooting guard position. That's kind of what Bailey's going to be. And then Najee's kind of more of a you know center big man with Mark and Nick Richards. They don't really have rotation in the trim, so you're probably looking at you know, G League. And, but I still think they're great players. I, I'm, I was impressed with the, what the Hornets were able to do with what they had picks wise. I would have to agree with you, Mike. I think Nick Smith Jr. was probably the pick that excited me the most outside of Miller. I was actually pretty thrilled with how the Hornets handled the draft after Miller. I was a little concerned um, because obviously they started off with Miller and a lot of people thought it was going to be Scoot. But Nick Smith Jr., a lot of people thought he was going to be lottery most of the year. Some people out in the top 10 had a lot of injuries at, you know, in college. But it was... Interesting to me that they thought he was going to go 15th. And they did a lot of draft workouts with a lot of players. I think around 110 
And I think they only selected one of those 110 players they worked out, which is crazy. Nick Smith Jr. was not one of them. And I think that's why Mitch Kupchak won in Nick Smith Jr. because he had him higher on his board. They didn't even think that he was going to fall to 27. So that's why I think that excites me because he was supposed to be lottery player, had a lot of injuries. And I think he fits well with Charlotte. And I would have to agree with Mike. I think he will probably take Book Knight out of a job and Book Knight will have to be traded or maybe waived, but we'll have to see what they'll decide to do with that. But I think Najee was a good pickup. They traded 34 and 37 to get him. And Bailey, solid pick. I think a lot of people hate on that pick. I don't know why exactly, because you can't really go wrong at 41, especially with the team you already have. And you'll probably play for the Swarm, and Najee might be overseas. But we'll have to see. I think it was a good draft for the Hornets. But I think that the draft kind of impacted free agency a little bit. And I'm going to ask you this, Mike, again. Do you think that the Hornets selecting Brandon Miller will potentially impact Miles Bridges or P.J. Washington free agency? I do think will for a couple of reasons. Um, so if, if Brandon Miller pans out to be what we think he's going to be, you know, we're kind of going to be looking at maybe not right off day one, but pretty soon starting him at the three position for the Hornets. And, you know, with you know, Miles Bridges, I, I know potentially Miles can play the three or the four, and I think Miles is stronger at the four, but I don't really think that impacts him signing with, yeah, re-signing with the Hornets. I think he still will. Um, but, I mean, down the road, you're kind of looking at a starting lineup of LaMelo, Terry, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, and Mark Williams. And so if you have those guys, that kind of, I would say there's not really a starting spot there for P.J. Washington. And that would kind of make me question how much that really impacts him signing. You know, I know the Hornets really want to sign P.J. Washington. Would you say that impacts, you know, his ability to re-sign with the Hornets a lot or no? I would say that it has a small impact. I would actually probably, maybe not say small, but a, a pretty decent impact on P.J. Because I would say if the Hornets think P.J. wants too much money, They'll be like, we have Brandon Miller, and I think they will resign Miles. So I think they're going to be like, we have Brandon Miller and Miles Bridges. They can kind of be interchangeable. Miles probably play the four more. But I would look at, like, with PJ, they're like, is it really worth paying $20 million for this guy to be our backup? That's how I would look at it. And if they drafted Scoot, they wouldn't even be considering that because PJ would be starting. And I, I just, I don't know, I think it definitely impacts it. But I think they, Probably will still look to re-sign him. Maybe you look at a sign-in trade, uh, but that there was one trade with Harrison Barnes, and that might be out of the cards now because of the three-year, fifty-four million contract extension he just got, which was a potential option. But I think it will impact PJ, especially if he wants a lot of money. But if he wants around fifteen to eighteen mil, I think the Hornets easily re-sign him. That's all I have to say. So with that, we'll go straight to the free agency because obviously that starts tomorrow at, I believe, 6 p.m. Eastern time. And with that free agency starting, let's talk first about potential LaMelo extension. We look around a five-year, $210 million deal. And that could potentially happen right as free agency starts. Um, heard a lot of people say that. What do you think about LaMelo Ball getting $210 million for five years? Do you think he's worth it or do you think he's not worth it? I think just in general, the Hornets have a lot to think about here in free agency. But I, I do agree with you. I think their number one priority, um, you know, Friday or just kind of heading into the free agency stage, is definitely give to give Lamelo that extension. Now you can argue all day whether or not he's worth that two hundred and ten million dollar extension, and some people will say, oh, well, he's not worth you know forty million, forty one, forty two million. But the truth is, the Hornets just have to give him that extension. He's the face of the franchise. He's going to be that guy for a long, long time. And I think it's, I think it's a great decision and something that needs to happen very, very. I would have to agree. I just, I feel like Lamelo likes Charlotte. He likes being there. He wants to have a winning culture there. He wants to build one there. And I don't think that's really a stretch for $210 million, considering how the players now are getting even more and more money. Like, you're seeing guys get, like, $275 million deals. And probably five years from now, we're probably going to be saying that Lamelo's contract was, like, a steal for the Hornets. So I, I just look at it like that. And... I say, why not? The soonest this thing opens the contract ext or extend him, then I'd say go for it because he is the Hornets' star player, and you gotta treat him like you gotta give him the keys. 
give him this extension. He's got all the keys in the world. And the way they've treated him in free agency, let him kind of have the decision, or not free agency, but with the draft, they kind of let him have the decision with Brandon Miller. And he's right there in the workout. So I'm saying they're handling it well. And if they give him that extension, things will be back in business, I would say. But with that being said, let's kind of get into the full free agency. You know, we have Miles Bridges, restricted free agent. P.J. Washington, restricted free agent. Dennis Smith Jr., unrestricted free agent. Teo Maladon, restricted. To be Mikai Luke, unrestricted. And Kelly Ray, unrestricted. How would, what, what player would you say that you think the Hornets should just really prioritize? And maybe a couple players that you think they should prioritize in free agency. Well, I think really after the Mello extension, your next biggest priority on Miles Bridges, you know, he's he's a huge piece for the team, a huge, huge reason why they struggled this past year without him, and just having him back, I mean, you're talking about a 20-plus point per game for every game, and, you know, it's just going to need Miles Bridges to be the team that they, they can be, and I, after that, I think your next priority is, well, I mean, I kind of say they're tied a little bit, you got to talk about Kelly Oubre and P.J. Washington, um, now, I know the Hornets have kind of stated that P.J. is kind of more a priority, because I, I think, you know, with Brandon Miller and Gordon Hayward, if you were re-signed Kelly Oubre, you kind of got to overlay the small four position. Um, but I just think if you let both P.J. Washington and Kelly Oubre walk, you, you don't have a ton of bench anymore. You know, you've got, you still got Cody Martin on the bench and maybe one or two other pieces, but those are kind of were the Hornets' big bench pieces in the last few years. Yeah, I know you're, uh, before I go into my own thing, I want to hear about you with Kelly Oubre. I know you're higher on him than than some about re-signing re- re- him, but I want to hear why you think that they should prioritize him as player, as PJ. Yeah, I think, um, I just think, I'm a huge Kelly Oubre fan, but not only that, I just think Kelly Oubre is just a huge player for the franchise. I mean, you really saw it this season. He had a great season, stepping up for, you know, just the Hornets says they really had a lot of injuries this year, really stepping up for them. And I just think Kelly Oubre is a great piece. And I know that, you know, teams are already pursuing him, like I know the Cavs and other teams that might be able to give him a starting spot the next up and coming years and um so he probably won't end up signing with the Hornets. But I just think he's a great piece. I mean and I don't know, it'd be great to see him on the bench. And I know I know they're a little hesitant to sign him also because you know we're gonna be starting Brandon Miller. I mean the Hornets are gonna be signing starting Brandon Miller. But and then you've got Hayward, but I, I don't know. Part of me is like I'd much rather have Dubre and Hayward's only got one year left in his contract and so I think they shouldn't really look at it as like, oh, we can't sign Kelly Oubre because of Hayward. But that's just my opinion. That's a good point. And honestly, I'm kind of with you with the Kelly Oubre train. I think that he would be a great fit scoring off the bench. But, however, I don't think it's very – like, it's possible money-wise, but I just don't know if the roster is constructed to bring him back with Cody Martin, Bryce McGowan's, and Gordon Hayward. And unless they move on from Hayward, which is – I would say it's a possibility. They've been trying to look for it, and this is the most likely he's probably ever going to be traded. But I would have to agree with Mike. Miles Bridges is number one, obviously main priority. And that's pretty obvious because you saw the Hornets with him. He was the leading scorer of that team, 43 wins. You don't, you don't re-sign Miles Bridges. You're simply not going to be a playoff team. You re-sign Miles Bridges, I would 100% say that they are a playoff team, or at least playing. And P.J. Washington, obviously, I think he is the biggest question coming into free agency because you look at Kelly Oubre, you know, Rod Boone from Trail Observer already said he's unlikely. So you think about that. And P.J., the Hornets have said from the beginning that they want to bring back P.J. But I wonder if it's changed with Brandon Miller, but who knows? So I think P.J. is a player that's going to be like a question mark, like 50-50. I'm still 50-50 on it. Like, are they going to bring him back? Or are they going to sign and trade him? And if they do sign and trade him, what are they going to so it's just that thoughts with that. But I'm leaning more towards that they will bring back Miles and PJ. But the big is another question mark is Dennis Smith Jr. And how much will he want? And what will teams offer him? That that's another thing. Because the MLE for the Hornets, they have it. And is he are the Hornets gonna use that on him? I would be kind of hesitant to do so. I would kind of hope that we wouldn't like the Hornets wouldn't have to do that. But you never know. And that's going to be interesting, too. There's, there's so much decisions for the Hornets to make, but they have a good team already. So you add Miles Bridges, P.J. Washington, you have a good bench. You have potentially maybe Dennis Smith Jr. You know, you know, that's still a question mark. Cody Martin, Gordon Hayward, P.J., and Mark Williams. That's without Oubre, 
not Mark Love, I'm sorry, but Nick Richards. So that's a that's a good bench. And so I think you add all that together and the Hornets are a playoff team. So be Mikhail Luke, obviously. I don't think anybody really thinks he's gonna come back along with Tao Maladon, which I mean they did their thing with the Hornets, but not now. So I'm honestly interested now, you know, with potentially re signing Miles Bridges, hopefully. What do you think he's worth with everything that went down? Do you, would you say that he is still like a 15 million guy? Like, is he still worth 15 million? Or would you say it's less? No. I think, you know, I think the question really isn't, is he worth 15 million? Because everyone knows Miles Bridges is worth 15 million. I mean, he averaged over 20 points a game. Like, he's a worth 15 million. I think really the question is what are teams in the NBA willing to give him after everything's gone down? And that's something, you know, the Hornets are really going to have to look at the playing field and see what, you know, what they can really get in for. Because you want to save as much money as you can, you know. Other teams aren't offering very much money. I don't think the Hornets have to offer the massive contract. I think he already wants to come back to the Hornets. So, But he's I, in my mind, he's definitely worth that 15 million. I agree. That's also another thing, which I, I obviously think he is too. But you're looking at the years on the contract. And I don't think you can really get him a four-year. Well, five. Obviously, definitely not five-year, because that would probably be a max. But I think you look at a three-year. I think that's what it's going to be. I would maybe say it's like a three-year, 65, maybe 70, maybe seven, probably 70, three-year, 70 million deal. Which, to some people, would probably be a shock. They're like, oh, wow, he doesn't deserve that. But I think it's fair. And... I'm excited for it, but I don't I don't see it being a one year. I've heard some people say, "Oh, he's only going to sign one year and test the market again, so he can get that max contract." I don't I don't see that because he he wants to stay with the Hornets. I would say. But another topic is, how much money do you think PJ Washington's worth? Would you say it is twenty million? Because the market right now with all these players, Grant Will, Grant Williams might get twenty million dollars a year from another team. But would you say PJ Washington is worth twenty million? Well, I just gotta say first of all, I think Grant Williams even. The rumors of him even getting twenty million dollars are absolutely absurd. But I mean, I love Grant Williams, but twenty million is absurd. Um, but you know, I personally, it for me, it depends on the team. I think for some teams, you could argue that PJ Washington's worth twenty million. Some teams you couldn't. Um, but, and I think that's a big question for both PJ Washington and Kelly Oubre is that there are teams in the NBA that are going to be willing to give him a starting spot. You know, I already talked about the Cavs for Kelly Oubre. Plenty other teams that would give PJ Washington a starting spot, and now we look at the Hornets. That starting spot is probably well, it's definitely not going to be there for Kelly Oubre. It's probably not going to be there for PJ Washington either. And so I just it's really interesting going into free agency to see how much that's really going to impact whether or not they're going to resign. And so I think really the question is for the Hornets: if you're looking at PJ Washington, you're really looking at someone who's going to be your sixth man, and are you willing to give you know your sixth man an eighty million four year deal? And that's twenty million a year, you know, and you know, he's not going to want 15 million a year, but could you persuade him down a little bit from 20? And just, you know, I think it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, I mean, I think the Grant Williams thing is absurd too. I don't really think he's that quality of player. And I know PJ is better than him, but I would say PJ on another team with 20 mil makes perfect sense. I mean, he's a guy that scored like 43 points his last game before he got injured. One of his last games, and. He's a guy that can get you 15 points a game, play good defense. And really, I mean, he's a key player for the Hornets. But I would say $20 million for a backup power forward might be a stretch. If he still wants that much money, I would hope he still wants to win the Hornets. I feel like it might be too much. But who knows? I mean, I might get more okay with it if he really shows out and Maybe they'll do different lineup combos. You know, we've talked about Brandon Miller at the two. I know he thinks he's the three, but maybe Brandon Miller at the two. Miles at the three, PJ at the four. He can still start. Different lineups, I'm sure. But 20 million might be a stretch at that type of backup position, I would say. But with talking about contracts and money and how much you think people should pay, do you think Kelly Oubre is worth around? Because he's he got paid $12 million over the two years he was with the Hornets. Would you say he's worth around $18 million, or would you say, like, that's too much? I think I get it. It depends a little bit on the team we're talking about, but in my personal opinion, I do think right now, um, Kelly is worth $18 million. I mean, you're talking about a guy who averaged 20 points this season, a really good player, and so I would say, 
from eighteen million. And I, I do think, you know, there maybe the Hornets won't, but I do think there's a team out there that will give him that money if that's what he's looking to make. I look into what Ubre has said after the after the regular season ended, and he said he wanted to find a home, and thought Charlotte was a great place to be at home, and he hasn't had that home in the NBA. And I think about all that, and I'm like. I'm sure he would, like, he, he, I remember when he signed with the Hornets many years, like two years ago. It was a shocker. And there was at least seven teams that wanted to sign him. The Clippers, I, I think, uh, a lot of contenders. There's a lot of contenders that won him. The Lakers were one of them. And he just chose the Hornets. Two year, 26 mil, I believe, 27, something like that. And he took the Hornets. And he, I would say, did pretty good for the Hornets. Uh, kind of struggle at times, but he's a guy that wants to stay and where he, where he's at. And honestly, if he wants around like $15 million, I don't see why the Hornets shouldn't bring him back. Maybe they could open up, maybe look at some trades, you know, Cody Martin or some, maybe Hayward. Look at some trades and then try to incorporate him back into the team because he sounds like he wants to be there. He likes Buzz City. So I don't see why not. Why, I mean, eighteen million, a hundred percent, he's worth it on another team. But I don't th- think the Hornets would be willing to pay pay that much money. So you look at the roster, right? If if everything went well, you have Lamelo, Terry, Brandon Miller, Miles Mark Williams off the bench, still a little skittish. Dennis Smith Jr. You don't know. Cody Martin, Gordon Hayward, PJ, and Nick Richards. And then you have little pieces like Nick Smith, Nick Smith Jr., Book Knight, McGowan's, Thor, Kai, Najee, and Bates. You look at that roster, and you know they still might have money to get another veteran because Mitch talked about that before. By looking at this roster right here, do you think that is a playoff team or a playing team or worse than that? I would definitely say it's a playing team. I think really you're looking at definitely the verge of making the playoffs. Um, I look at the e- if I see this roster, and we're talking about a, a fully healthy roster, I know, but I mean, this the guys live with this team. I mean, you've got. Lamella Ball, 20 plus point per game score. Terry Rogier, 20 plus point per game score. Miles Bridges, 20 plus point per game score. I mean, Miller could be that as well. And, you know, we're just kind of getting started to see what Mark can do. Mark's a great player as well. So, this is a really exciting franchise to be a part of right now. And just, I, I really do think the playoffs are a possibility next year. I, I, mean, I am a little interested to see about the bench because, you know, there's no guarantee they're going to resign Dennis Smith, but they obviously need a backup. Um, point guard, and I mean, I love Dennis Smith, but I, I'll also be fine with a, a different bag of point guard. But I am kind of, I would like the Hornets to resign him, so I'm hoping they do. And then you've got Cody Martin on the bench, and you know, hopefully PJ Washington. We still got Nick Richards, um, and then hopefully Nick Smith Jr. pans out well. So you got some quality pieces. Yeah, I don't want to give the Hornets too lofty expectations, but I I do think they could be a playoff team. I think they could be a six seed, but everything would have to go right. You know, obviously, Miles has that 10-game suspension. There's injuries that are likely to happen with, like, every team does. But you look at LaMelo and his constant improvement and him becoming, like, solely a leader, I think that's a big thing because this team won 43 games. Essentially, the same team with added pieces of Brandon Miller, Smith, and a better Richards and stuff like that. But you look at this team, and you're like, this is a way better team than it was when they won 43 games. I think a lot of people forget that. They look at the Hornets as a team that won 27 games last year. That's what they look at. And they don't even think about the injuries and stuff. So I think 100% of this team is a playoff team. I think six seeds, definitely in the cards. And I think Terry Rozier is going to be a piece of this if they don't move, move on from him. Because he can really just kind of be at his own here. He doesn't have to force himself to just shoot and dribble and try to do all these things and, like, score everything for the Hornets. Because now you have scores, like Mike was just talking about. You got Lamelo, Terry, Miller, Miles, PJ, Mark, that can get you some buckets. They all can score a lot. Gordon Hayward can get you some buckets. You have a good core here that can score. And you have you got guys like Smith, Martin, Mark, and Richards, and Miles, PJ. Like, like they're good defenders. Like, this is a solid team. Steve Clifford's going to love it. And... It's built well together. You also got, like, the young guys to be backups in case there are injuries. But I would also hope the Hornets get a veteran. I don't know who it's going to be. But I would say it is a playoff team. And I'm very excited to see 
But Mitch Kupchak decides to do a free agency. I hope nothing bad happens like we saw last year. And we all thought it was going to be a great offseason. We were finally heading in the right direction. And, you know, everything happened. But here we are. And free agency is tomorrow. Starts at 6 p.m. Eastern. And that's going to do it for the Chocast. Thank you, Mike, for joining me. Thanks for having me. And that's going to do it. Hope you all have a good one.